All right, thank you very much. Love. 
Pleasure. story. Um, it's derived from another instrument called the uh, Dusun Goni and uh, the Dusun is the hunter uh, in the Bamara. Uh, the the, the Bamara tribe of West Africa and they're like Mali, Burkina Faso region. Some of them also go into like uh, Ivory Coast. So this is a weapon? Um, yeah, well, they so the way the hunters play it actually is like like this. So they play it like a gun, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, the Dusungoni, which is originally six strings and is an octave lower, um, you were only allowed to play it if you were a hunter. You know, if you were part of the hunter society and if you went, you know, you, you had to be initiated. You had to be a real man. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the young fellas who wanted to play. This instrument too. They decided. First. Yeah, they decided in the I think it was in the 1950s or 1960s yeah. um, that they're just gonna modify the instrument a little bit. So they added four strings, and because um, it was the 60s. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, they they raised the um, um, the pitch by an octave and called it Kamalan Goni. And Kamalan means young man. So it was a young man, or the young hunters. Yeah, and Ngoni, it's really, I think Ngoni must be their, their name for stringed instruments because there's a, there's, there's a couple of other instruments in Mali, for example, they're also called Ngoni, mm -hmm. and they're all stringed instruments, so that must be, yeah, yeah. Ngoni must be their string. How, how, did, how did you come across it? I came across this one traveling in uh, West Africa because I've been spending since I've been a teenager since my, my first trip to Africa I was 16 um, I've been just going backwards and forwards you know, to Africa and always you know trying to find new places and the new sound. And, and new music and yeah you know, I did some collaborations over there I produced a few African artists as well and, uh, um, well both were actually teachers of mine, um, uh, my Ngoni teachers who are from Burkina Faso. They're called the Yara Ngoni brothers. And, um, and uh, my Vera teacher who made this instrument too, this is the other instrument here, for the uh, Imbira Zavadzimu. From the, um, this one comes from the Shona people of Zimbabwe. And um, it's supposed to be a Quite old. I mean, not this particular one, but the, the Imbira itself is supposed to be quite old. You know, like hundreds of years, and uh, um, it's it, it's used by the Shona people actually, kind of like a telephone to the spirit world, because they um, like every family in Zimbabwe has at least one spirit medium in the family where they um, they they channel like one of the family's ancestors. And the way to uh, to uh, make that happen is basically they, they have a ceremony that starts at eight o'clock in the evening and goes they they play all the way through till eight in the morning and during that ceremony you know people get possessed and start channeling their yeah, done this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I played lots of ceremonies over there with my teacher because he plays you know every week he plays a few ceremonies. So when I'm there. Um, they always love the fact, you know, that there's a, some white guy out there, you know, like loving their culture so much that I went through the trouble of, you know, learning the music and uh, getting involved. And, Have you been possessed? 
Uh, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a spirit medium, so uh, it hasn't, that, that hasn't happened. You've been inviting you back and but, hoping yeah. that it's going to happen this time. But I've, uh, but I've uh, um, what, do you, what do you call it, facilitated possession yeah. <laughs> in that way. Yeah, yeah, with your... Uh, yeah, and it's really interesting. I mean, it's like I mean, because for me it was yeah. first really strange. You know, even though I've been exposed to it a lot, but it was really still, still a, a strange concept. Um, the whole thing about the spirit world. And stuff like that. But for people in Zimbabwe, it's like the, what we call the real world and the spirit world is just as real mm. for them. You know, well, of course, so you have Brian Eno and uh, David Burns. Do, do an album about yeah that's a great album too yeah, what is it yeah, my life in the in the bush of ghosts bush of ghosts yeah 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 that's that's right mm. yeah that's right in fact you should do an album with Brian Eno I'd love to <laughs> that's sweet that we have to mention to Brian yeah. we have to get to Brian somehow yeah, and get, yeah, get you to him get Brian or yeah, get him to exactly. produce my next album that's what yeah it's you genius why haven't you thought of that before yeah. that's right but I mean just just briefly wait, wait, wait where about you from exactly I was born in Germany and I left when I was 16 because I was already then I was getting involved in the sort of African music um, society there in in Germany at the time I had a teacher from Ghana who, uh, who taught me drumming that was my first instrument It's still a very strong and, uh, African music culture in Germany isn't it? Very strong, yeah 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 there's lots of Africans, especially West Africans that, that um, Germany. Then I spent a lot of winters in Africa studying and I would come back to Europe for the summer and travel around and that's when I met Harry actually. We, we met uh, back in Europe in like, I think it was 1980. I met him on the street in Switzerland about 30 years, 35 years ago. Because that's what I used to do, like in the summer I'd come you know, back to Europe, play, play on the street, around the place, save up money and then go back to Africa for the winter to study. Yeah. He was playing congas and I was I was playing guitar. And yeah, I was playing a mandolin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the first men, so. He was pretty good? He was great. Yeah, was yeah, it was actually the three of us, um, him, his brother and I, and his brother was a guitar player too. Yeah, we, we got together and started jamming and, uh, and then we've been friends ever since and we've known each other those years and we went in Japan on and off together and, uh, you know so so we would you know do like certain bits and pieces together you know for a certain time then I would go off and do another project and then go back to Africa then come back the next year and then we would do a few things together and you know so but we were always sort of keeping in, in contact and uh, when Harry was in India when Harry was in India, I was uh, in Africa, and uh, but we still kind of like, you know, back then it was writing letters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we met up again in Japan, because I was, I was living in Japan for five years, and, and Harry came to Japan too, but he sort of arrived um, at the end of my stay in Japan, and I, I was already then sort of half moving to Australia, because after living in Japan, but you're well, well positioned to show him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what, what, what did you show? Well, actually, I introduced him to a few Japanese musicians that that I was working with at the time. Mm -hmm. And one of them is called Yano Makoto, and uh, he's actually a, a very famous composer in Japan and producer too. And he started a group that um, was called the Yellow Magic. Orchestra that was back in the 70s, and that that's the group that sort of started off um, a pianist from uh, Japan called Ryoichi Sakamoto. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's he's done uh, he's actually done a soundtrack with David Byrne for the Last Emperor for that movie. They I didn't they know did that. yeah 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 they they did that soundtrack together, which which got them a Grammy. And, uh, so how did you come to work with these guys? I mean, you, you just played under their window until they, until they came out and talked uh, to you? Or? Well, you sort of meet people, you know, like especially I mean, when you're in the sort of musician circles, you know, there's always like a jam session somewhere or a party somewhere where you end up jamming with someone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so who, who actually makes these instruments? Um, who, who made this them? one was made by my teacher over there, um, Garikai Tirikoti. And uh, the, um, the steel comes from... Uh, seed of a 
Visual 504. It's the sprung steel in it. So you, so you straighten it out further. And all he uses as far as tools, is basically he's got a little piece of railway line that he uses as an anvil and a hammer and a file. And he makes the whole thing out of that. Oh, they're, they're amazing over there. I mean, like, like I remember he, my teacher actually had a Peugeot as well. And, uh, with no springs in it, obviously. Uh, we, we, I mean, we had so many things missing. Yeah. We made and, instruments. Yeah. And every time we had to go somewhere, you had to fix the car. Mm. When you started the journey, you would break down somewhere halfway there, mm. and then you had to fix it again to make it back. But he was really good yeah. at fixing cars, obviously. Oh, they were amazing. Like I mean, if they if they break uh, something and they don't have the part, they just make something makeshift that would work at least for a few hours <laughs> and right. get you to the next that's destination right. kind of thing. That's all that you need. Yeah. So that's, what you, that's a good philosophy in life. I mean, did you bring a philosophy from that learning experience in Africa? Um, as, as well as yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, I. I I guess I picked up things everywhere somehow, you know, through like living in all those different cultures, it also like rubbed on. So uh, rubbed, philosophy of rubbed, life. Rubbed off. Philosophy of life. Well, I'm, I'm so, my main philosophy is just like, you know, that we're all one. You know, and, and I experience that more and more, you know, whenever I travel to all different countries, you know, and also you, you kind of meet your people wherever you go to. It's like, what's that famous saying, birds of the same feather flock from, together? Flock together. And uh, that's definitely been my experience, like wherever I go, you know, even, even in places where I don't know how to speak a language, you know, um, in the beginning. I always end up, you know, meeting my people, you know, that, and, and they're everywhere. So you live in that. Yeah. All right. What's the weirdest situation you've ever found yourself in? The weirdest situation is like that's a that's a really long story. Actually. Tell me the long story. Right? Okay. Well, that was um, when I first came to um, Senegal. I couldn't speak French and I couldn't speak Wolof, which was their um, native language there. And um, but I, I met these drummers and they were amazing drummers and I just wanted to learn from them, so I was sort of hanging out with them every day, but I didn't really know how to communicate with them, you know, just sort of making signs, and uh, they were, um, I don't know whether you've heard of the dervishes. I mean, the whirling dervishes. Dervish, yeah, whirling dervishes. They, they actually have a, 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 a sect in, uh, in, uh, in Senegal called the Baifal, and they are also, they they're, they're sort of they're these monks that dance and play these drums and sing and they you know and they recite the same sort of zikr as the dervishes to the la ilaha illallah and um, but what happened um, you know I was doing that with them and then one night they said oh come with us tomorrow and we do the same you know we sing some zikr together and we play the drums and stuff and and, and they. Um, and, and then I said to them, well, yeah, I want to learn a bit of Wolof. And, and in Wolof, when you say, um, how are you, it's uh, Mangi Firek, which, um, um, which their, their answer normally for that is, um, um, I'm here, like this. Yeah. When somebody says to you, how are you? But um, they, because they were part of this, um, Certain group, you know, they're, they're, apparently the the uh, the Bifar people were split in half. There was two groups, you know, and they were trying to compete with each other. And one, and the leader of the one group was sitting Jibi. So they actually told me that when somebody said to me, "How are you?" I would reply, "I'm in the mercy of sitting Jibi," <laughs> <laughs> not knowing what I was saying. <laughs> and they let you go and for how long? For a while, until like I mean, they they like they, then that that night that I was talking about, they took me to this place, and there was this huge arena, just full of people, and the Syrian Jibi there on the stage, you know, and um, 
and then they dragged me up on the stage too, so I was like the token white guy. <laughs> and uh, so we did the zikr there up on the stage and everything, and I even like at the end of the night, the um, Serin Jimmy gave me a ride in his limo and dropped me off where I was like... After yeah. your declaration, like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then the next day these friends of mine, these other Senegalese friends of mine, they, they came and they were going like, we just heard the news, you know, you're, you're part of the Serin Jimmy clan. I said, really? <laughs> no idea. They said, yeah, you so like, you know, the, the word is out. <laughs> it's like, so I was basically walking around telling everybody when they say, how are you? you know, they, the mercy of sitting Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I love your weird story. It's good. Yeah. But I mean, living in Byron Bay, I mean, how do you come to be in Byron Bay? Um, I came to Australia in the early 90s, and, um, and my wife and I had our first son then, and I was in Sydney at the time, and I didn't want to raise children in a city. And I, I went for a holiday to Byron Bay, and I felt like this is the place to raise children. Well, and, it's uh, just a great place. Isn't it? Yeah, but a really good place to raise children too. Because what I found is like the community is uh, yes. is really um, <laughs> geared to people with children. Like you can go to a party and take your kids because there's like a kids space usually, and, and you know people taking turns looking after them, you can take them to gigs, you know, in the, in the local halls and stuff like that, and it's like, so your social life doesn't necessarily stop the moment that you have children, which it often does when you're in the city, because there's not that many I was gonna say, places where you can, can yeah, yeah, well, yeah, pretty much I guess, but that was my experience of Byron Bay, and that was why I decided to go yeah, there. In a small community, you have a bigger sense yeah. of community? Yeah. Still, in, in, a, in a small town, you have a bigger community. Yeah, and it's also, I mean, Byron Bay is quite, you know, cosmopolitan, you know, because you've got people from all over the world passing through there, and That's right. you know, got some great festivals there. You do have some pretty great festivals. Yeah. But who are some of your, I guess, heroes? Are they all African? Or? Mostly, I mean, I've got, well, a big hero of mine is Bob Marley. Yeah. I love Jimi Hendrix too, though. James Brown was a big influence when I was younger. They, they were sort of like, like when I was a teenager, that was be before getting into African music, was sort of, you know, Bob Marley, Jimi Hendrix, James Brown, Miles Davis. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the Germans have always, strangely enough, been great students of really good, really good It's a funny thing. The Germans are probably more than anyone else in Europe. Is that fair to say? Yeah, they're very. Um, very open to music. Well, I mean, France too, though. I mean, France has always been like very open to, you know, like, of course, I mean, they, a lot I mean, of the jazz greats like, end up living there. Exactly because they 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 couldn't get enough gigs in the states, Correct. Well, and but had great followings over in France. They got the Paris and all of a sudden they were super. Yeah, like Sydney Bechet. Yeah. Which part of Germany are you from? Um, Duisburg. It's near Cologne, Düsseldorf, like a. Call it the uh, golden triangle of uh, northern Europe. It's like the border of Holland, Belgium, and Germany, so sort of like coming together. So, you're living at 16, of course, you, uh, was there a particular reason for that? Maybe the draft coming up? Or? That was part of the reason, you know. Um, uh, that, that was part of the reason. I had a funny story with the other. That's another story. <laughs> 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 yeah, nice to talk to you, man. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah. Oh, good, yeah. Thanks. We're going to play in Montreal Jazz Festival after this. A few times there, we're going to play in France too, I think. And Germany and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I used to travel with the sound guy, but now we just two of us. So.